to go. Hello, folks. Uh, welcome back to the Brit Canal West Hancock Athletics Podcast. This is Dan Crawl, April 10th, 2024, episode 105. And I have three generations of Zools with me tonight. Uh, Doug, Jake, Kane, and Kale. Uh, between Jake, Kane, and Kale, they have five state football championships between the three of them. So it'll be a lot of fun to talk about their, their title runs and uh, have a good time checking out their rings, especially Kale's new 2023 ring. So welcome, fellas. It'll be a good time tonight. Uh, before we get to these guys and some introductions, I have a record 24 sponsors tonight. So as you can see on my screen, I'm pretty much just a little head in the middle because I have so many sponsors and I can barely fit them on the screen. So uh, I want to recognize them because they give to the Sanger Legacy Fund. Uh, the Legacy Fund is used to fund our West Hancock Hall of Fame. We give scholarships to graduating seniors. We support the athletic and activity funds. We help pay for rings and plaques and footballs when we win championship after championship these days uh, a lot of fun to just get back to the community and the school that way if you want to sponsor the podcast get a hold of me uh if you just want to give to the legacy fund you can go to sangerstrong.com you can set up recurring payments through that website uh makes it very easy to give uh, automatically so my sponsors tonight i have nick schmidt levi dunn trucking the brit vet clinic trollson auto parts window world in mason city the Brit Car Truck Bike and Tractor Night Cruise and Mojo Productions, Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company, Miller and Sons Golf Cars, Doug and Kathy Zool, Daniel's Auto Collision, Triple B's Food Trucks, Swenson's Hardware, Jeff and Becky Nielsen, the Brit Food Center, Kelly Real Estate, Carty Care Transportation LLC in Kanawa, the Kanawa Community Home, Easy Wash Cleaning Systems in Clear Lake, Stevens Realty, Deemer Realty, Dave Hewling, Brandon Douglas, and Katie's Salon and Tanning and Titanka. Again, 24 sponsors, a new record for us. So thanks to all those sponsors out there. Uh, 50 episodes ago, I always highlight 50 episodes ago, what happened about, you know, give or take a year and a half, two years ago. That was a 2022 playoff episode with Jay and Kevin. So make sure you check that out. If you haven't already, I'll have that linked uh, to my posts on Facebook later tonight. So all right, let's start with some uh, intros. Uh, Doug, we'll start with you. We'll move to Jake and then Kane and Kale. We'll just go in chronological order. We'll call it that. So, uh, Doug Zool here. I graduated in 1978. Uh, just did two years of football. Uh, sophomore and junior year. Uh, didn't didn't do any more sports since I was just a farm kid. So. Uh, Got a no college, uh, just farming college. Um, just found jobs in the winter time and got married in 1988. Kathy Slugger. Uh, she had two boys, Brad and Jake, right there, and uh, doing good so far. Good deal. And we'll get to your ring later. We talk championship rings. You and I yeah. have. Had to make up for the lack of, there we go, more <laughs> ring, right? <laughs> Nick, what's keeping you busy this, these days? Uh, just farming. Uh, my dad passed away two years ago, so we're, Jake and I are farming uh, the cent, two century farms here. Uh, just farming and trucking in the wintertime and... Uh, since we don't have no sports anymore in the wintertime, now we just got track for kale and Kia's got uh, volleyball and track and basketball. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's about our fun time. Yep, and photography, doing some, yep. some taking pictures. Yep, yep. Took a lot of pictures of the kids. Yep, yep. many, many, yep. many. Jake. <sighs> What's new with Jake and Britt these days? Um, I think uh, my dad pretty much summed it up. <laughs> um, like I said, we just farming with him, and uh, I drive truck. When we're not farming, I drive truck and haul a lot of liquid fertilizer around. Um, yeah, and then just uh, pick on Kane and Kale and Kia and Rachel a lot. <laughs> Someone needs to, especially Rachel. Yeah. 
Uh, and I don't know if people know this, but Rachel's grandma, Hattie, was my babysitter growing up. Uh, she watched my sister and I and then my brother for five nights a week when my parents had the restaurant. So um have some connections with, uh, with Rachel's grandma, your guys' great grandma. She was uh, kind of a third grandma to, to us. So Kane, down in Iowa City, what's up? Uh, yeah, I uh, currently go to the University of Iowa, living the college life. Um, I just got accepted into the radiation sciences program, so that's pretty exciting. And my, I pretty much just go to class, do homework, um, try and work out when I can, and just hang out with the friends I've made. Scrabble, Scrabble tournaments on the weekends, I'm sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying. Yep, try yep. That, that's what everyone would like to hear. And Kale, you're a senior this year, obviously. Uh, what are your uh, What are you doing to finish up high school, and what are your plans for this fall? Um. Well, now that the wrestling's over, I did track just for a little more time with my friends before we kind of part ways for college. But once school's over, I'll head down to Iowa City just like Kane did and start doing. Uh, the business and finance stuff. Nice. So, uh, Kane, you'll be a junior next year, correct? If I'm yep. doing my math right. So you'll have a couple years together on campus. That'll be fun. So yeah, yeah. it will be so, fun. So I'm excited because I got three generations of Zools here, essentially. And uh, like I said 1978, Doug graduated. Jake is 99, correct? Yep, and then yep. Kane was yep. 2022. Kale will graduate here in 2024. And like I said in the intro, uh, there's five state champions between Jake's state championship in 96. Uh, Kane got two, 2019-2021, and Kale uh, overlapped with Kane there in 2021 and then won it in 2023. So it's going to be a lot of fun to, to talk and compare. And I told these guys they have to promise me a little bit of smack talk a little bit of bragging, something, just, you know, just have a little fun on air. So it'll be a good time. So, uh, Doug, we're going to start with you. And like I said, you guys chime in whenever you want, uh, <laughs> give each other a hard time, add some stories, whatever, you know, um, just have some fun with it. Uh, you said you were, you were a farm kid growing up, uh, played football for a couple of years. What was it like playing for coach Sanger in the, uh, in the mid, mid to late seventies, he had already won a title in 73, uh, a couple years away from starting kind of what we know as the dynasty of Brit West Hancock football. What do you remember about a, a younger coach Sanger? Uh, he's tough, tough coach, tough practices. Uh, I remember riding, riding on the bus to Iowa city for the state football when they had it at Iowa city, uh, rode the bus down there. Uh, good practices. Coach Sanger was good, good guy. Uh, and uh, I, th I think we had one winning year, I think maybe 76 or 77. I don't remember what it was, but uh, it was good. A lot of tough kids. Uh, yeah. 76, 76 you guys butt. were four and four. 77, you guys were five and three. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Got my butt kicked quite a bit, but uh, it was it was good. It what was good. What positions did you play? I I played tackle, and then uh, and then I played center once in a while. Yeah. But uh, my big my big uh, Yahoo and football was uh, at a scrimmage. We had a scrimmage in Brett, and. Uh, I, our neighbor Stephen Hewling tackled the quarterback, and I got the ball and made a touchdown on him in, in the end zone. So that was my big football life story. <laughs> and you're um, going back another generation. Your dad also played for Britt. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you remember about him telling you about that before your generation? Oh yeah, I got one. I got it. I got the old story that dad always told and Jake and the boys have heard it, but dad, dad should have graduated in 1949. Uh, 
he he had all A's, but my grandma held him back because she didn't think he was that smart. So he graduated in 50 and uh, he was out for football and they didn't, sometimes they didn't have enough kids. So they went up town and grabbed kids off the street and brought them down to play. And, and dad would say they'd put a bunch of jerseys on them to make them look big. Hmm. And uh, he said, he said his, the big deal was, you know, the rivalry with Garner. Uh, they beat Garner six to nothing that year. That was the only game that Britt won and Garner didn't win any. So it was a winning season. <laughs> That's dad's famous story that he told quite a few times, quite a few times. But if he would have been on that 48 team, they won the conference. Did he ever talk about winning a conference title? No, he never did. Okay. He probably forgot, you know, I don't, yeah. We don't forget being Garner though. That's for sure. Yeah. That's all he, that's all he knew is they beat Garner six to nothing. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't know if that was in Brett or if that was in Garner, but uh, he said they used to practice. The practice field was where the hospital was, or oh. is, I should say. So, yeah, but uh, I don't remember who the players. I He was in school with Paul Kelly and uh, Joe Wellick. Was two of them I can think of right now was Maybe. in his class. Chuck Mockley's still around, and Britt, he, I think, was a right around that time maybe as well. Very possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mrs. Vanden Hook, I think she's still in Britt. She was in her class, and I think Francis Dawn was in Dad's class. Uh, that's, that's about it is all I can remember. Yeah. When did your dad pass? Uh, 21. 2021. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I don't think yep. I ever, I don't think I ever knew him growing up um, in the years I lived in Brit, but obviously the Zool name we all know. So, yeah. Yeah. So Doug, before we get to Jake here, uh, any sporting event we've been to in the last couple of years, you've been on the sidelines or on the edge of the mat taking pictures. What got you started with photography, especially for, for West Hancock? Just, uh, just when the boy, when, when, uh, Kane and Kale started going out for sports, you know, first, second grade. I, uh, I didn't take many of Jake and, uh, I thought, well, I'm going to take them all of Kane and Kale and Kia. So, uh, when they started wrestling and when they started in football, probably like third grade or so, that's when I started taking pictures of them and been taking them ever since. Nice. Get front, front row seat right there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's awesome. Probably yeah. heard some things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, like cheap hit and late hit and, you know, <laughs> yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Did pretty you hear Jake, Jake yelling from the from the stands at all? Uh, not too bad. No, he didn't. He didn't yell much. <laughs> no, no, he didn't yell much. Maybe in a wrestling thing he did, but he, he didn't yell much in football. Jake, 1999 grad, so this will be 25-year anniversary, or not anniversary, um, yep. reunion this Class year. Class reunion, yep. How does that make you feel? Uh, just a few more gray hairs is all. Because these two are just time in general. That uh, uh, just, just time, I think, yeah. They, they've been pretty good kids. Yeah, that state title game though had I think aged everybody a little bit this last this last fall. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, I asked these guys permission to talk about this, and they were fine with it. Uh, I would like to talk about Jake, your brother Brad, a little bit. Uh, passed away in two thousand yeah. at the age of twenty one. Uh, if you want to talk yep. about your brother a little bit and some memories of him, Doug, same to you. Um, talk about Brad for a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, he was two years older than me in school. Uh, he was born with a liver disease and, uh, yeah, he had a tough time growing up. Um, by the age of eight, he had two liver transplants when he was eight years old. 
and yeah, from there on, he was in and out of the hospital quite a bit. And my mom spent a lot of times, a lot of nights in motel rooms and waiting rooms and doctor visits and a lot. But uh, I mean, we got along real good, uh, got in a lot of trouble, did things we weren't supposed to do. The same stuff all brothers do when he wasn't uh, in the hospital. But yeah, he was fun. Um, I, a lot of people uh, around his era, if you ask about him, um, he always had a good joke. And <laughs> yeah, he was, he was fun to be around. I saw, uh, I was looking up online as a bitch where he worked at the, the Red Rooster, which is now the BBG. So he seemed like he, when he was able to, he was out and about. And Yep. Yeah, he always had a job, it seemed like, when he could. Uh, he liked his money. He liked the, he liked buying stuff he wanted. So, yep. Cars. Cars. <laughs> Camaros. Yeah, well, Kathy's in the background. Yeah, she's Camaros. Like, oh, yeah. Remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, yeah. I never got to know Brad. He was just enough older than me. Uh, he just, you know, I never really crossed paths when I was a younger kid. But, yeah. Doug, anything you want to say about Brad here? Uh, when he got to be a senior, it was prom. It was prom time. And uh, the kid loved the rock band Kiss. So <clears throat> it was getting prom time. And, and uh, his good friend, Brett Bukema, and uh, I said, well, you know, Kiss is in Vets in Des Moines, you know, and on prom. And he goes, oh, you know, and I says, I tell you what, you go to that. I'll give you the money to go buy the ticket, all everything you need. You'll remember that Kiss concert a lot more longer than you will ever remember prom. <laughs> so they left, they left here at our place that day, two kids, two kids going to Des Moines to a rock concert, you know, and and uh best best thing he ever did yeah yeah that w it was pretty good nice all right let's talk some football here fellas uh we're gonna start with jake but again kane kale jump in whenever you want give him a hard time compare contrast whatever uh jake uh football career at west hancock went from 1995 oh, to 1998 as a freshman in 95, the varsity team made the semifinals, uh, lost to Sigourney Kyoto in the Dome. You guys won the state championship in 96 as a sophomore. Uh, your <laughs> junior year, 97, made it to the semis, lost by four to Wapsie Valley. And then your senior season, you guys missed the playoffs with a 7-2 and two record. Uh, gave you an overall varsity record of 41-5, and five, so uh, not a bad four-year clip, five losses in just in those four years. Uh, talk about uh, playing for Coach Sanger, uh, Coach Perkins, winning that state title, a couple dome appearances on top of that, and then getting to watch your boys do the same thing and, and more. Yeah, um, I guess starting as a freshman, um, you know, you come into high school and the seniors are, you know, we're all probably average around 140 to 150 pounds, I would suppose, and you know, they, them guy, bigger guys, I mean, they were just tougher nails. I remember like Jake Johnson, Mark Kelly, Maya Johnson, I mean, Justin Palmer. There was quite a few tough guys on that team. And if I didn't mention you, I don't mean nothing by it, but they're just some guys I remember uh, quite well. Mm -hmm. and just really tough guys. Um they always had good things to say. Um, Mark Kelly was really good one. If they were doing a drill or something, you know, some of the younger guys are a little timid to jump in and he'd always come up there and tell you, get up here and get in line. Let's go. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty awesome. You know, he, he knew they were, you know, people were shy and didn't want to hop in there right away, but he made you feel a lot better about getting in there and getting going. Um, it wasn't uh, get in front of me so I don't have to go against that guy. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had um, a few of those growing up. Yeah. Sophomore year, um, yeah, the year state title that year, um, we didn't get a play a lot. I shouldn't say we didn't get a play a lot. We got to play in almost every game. 
mm -hmm. uh, some of the sophomores did because at halftime it was usually 35 or 45 to nothing and one more touchdown and the game was over. So uh, that's where we got, you know, maybe one or two series on offense. And But uh, I do remember uh, being in practice, scout team, um, the guys like uh, Jeff Sanger, Al DeWard, Corey Rasmussen, Jeremy Heyer, uh, Chad Klein, Nick May, just to name a few. And I tell you what, uh, we played a lot of scout team running back. And uh, I think they liked that. Um, <laughs> took quite a few uh, good hits, but, you know, for the most part, they're all really good guys. Um, uh, good guys to learn from, good mentors. Yeah. Did you, as a freshman, you know, they were a game away from the title game in 95, lost to Sigourney, and then dropped yep. down to 1A and won at 96. Did you, as a freshman in high school and then a sophomore, was that like, we're going to win state this year? Did you, was it kind of that expectation? Or as a young guy, you're just like, well, we're pretty good. Um, You know, freshman year, I feel like it, I don't know. When no one really, I think a lot of the seniors, um, when they made this semifinal game, like they were, they were obviously excited. And I don't think some of them thought they were going to get that far, but I tell you what, they worked their butts off and it showed mm -hmm. did a heck of a job, good junior class behind them. Yep. They were really tough. And then uh, you played more of a role your junior year in 97 because your sophomore year, uh, 96, 10 carries for 82 yards, one touchdown. But like you said, it was, you know, with a 42 nothing lead and, you know, let's get the 50 point rule going and go home today. There's the yep. 35 point continuous clock rule. So like your boys got to sometimes play a whole half of varsity football. A lot of those weeks, you guys, it was like eight minutes left in the third quarter. It's done. Right. Uh, yep. Junior year. Uh, that's when you took on more of a prominent role. You had 288 carries for 1,309 yards, uh, 4.5 yards per carry, 18 touchdowns. Uh, ben Bergman was next on the team with 647 yards. Uh, even caught two passes for 12 yards. And then, uh, let me see here, defensively, um, you had 28 tackles on defense. Uh, you guys made it back to the dome, lost to Wapsie Valley, twenty-two to eighteen. Good friend of mine, Jerry South, made the coach there at the time. Uh, what was it like starting and being the guy, the one of the, the the central focuses on the offense in '97, getting to the dome? Um, you know, I didn't really think of it uh, really all that much about being the guy, but uh, it's. It was it was fun. I mean, I'm glad I glad I did get to start and play. Um, like I said, good supporting team around me. You know, it makes it a lot easier to run the ball when you got some horses out in front of you and some good blocking backs. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was great, good time. Um, the dome, the game in the dome. The one thing I remember my junior year is it was so hot and I don't know why it was so dang hot in there, but <laughs> that's one thing I'll never forget. And that was Josh Evans. Didn't he pass it like almost 30 times that game? We kind of got behind and had to play catch up. I think it's a yep. record there was for quite a attempts in a playoff game. Yeah, there was quite a few. Yep. yep. And today we're a little more adept at passing. We don't pass it that many times, but when we need to, we can go to it. Back then, it, we ran even more than we do now. And so if we're passing a lot back in the 90s, it probably wasn't a great sign. Uh, You're right. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, and then 98, your senior year, you guys went 7-2. Seven, seven and two, uh, Only gave up 93 points in nine games. You're stout defensively, just – not as potent of scoring, only scored 304 points in those nine games. Uh, talk about it was the first time Wes Hancock had missed the playoffs since it became Wes Hancock in 89. What was that like ending your season maybe on, or your career on maybe a little more of a sour note per se? Yeah, um, definitely a disappointment. Um, I think we bumped back up to 2A. Yep. 
that year. Um, but uh, run into a tough Emmitsburg team on homecoming. I do remember that. We were leading at halftime, and uh, we never scored the second half. And I think they scored twice. So, no. yeah, uh, they were – I remember they were pretty tough kids. And then Lorenz um, Marathon, but, I believe, was the other loss. Yeah, we traveled to Lorenz, and I guess I, I didn't really know much about him. But I tell you what, they had a heck of a running back. Very good running back. And, um, yeah, they threw the ball around quite a bit on us. I mean – really surprising mm -hmm. and uh yeah kind of an unexpected loss we took and once again we were passing a lot in that game and like you said back then if we were passing a lot you knew we were kind of in trouble yeah and back in that era seven and two didn't get you into the playoffs most years you one loss at the most got you in usually um yep. yeah I had a co-worker from Lorenz Marathon that played in that game and I worked with him for three years. He let me know about it every single time we were together um, at staff meetings or stuff. And I said, dude, we you've never won a title. We have all these titles. He goes, I don't care. We beat you guys once. That's all that matters to me. So, um, you know, we talk about the losses a lot. And the people that do on the other end beat us, that's like their Super Bowl a lot of times. So I, I always keep yeah. that in mind. So seven and two, most people would kill for. We're, you know. Let's not talk about that season. We went seven and two. It's just a right. different mindset. Yep. Uh, talk about Coach Sanger, uh, Coach Perkins a little bit. What was it like uh, getting to play for those two legends? Um, yeah, I tell you what, two really, really special guys. Um, you know, like I, the one thing I think about them two guys is, to me, they're were better people than they were coaches and they were damn good coaches. So that just tells you how good of people they were. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Sanger, uh, I had a lot of talks with him um, about my brother actually when I was a senior and that's when my brother was in and out of the hospital quite a bit. And he always liked to check up, see how things were going and what I knew and yeah, just, you know, stuff a lot of people didn't really I wouldn't say care about, but you know, it's just something teachers usually don't ask you. And, you know, he, he was concerned. He, uh, my brother really liked him, you know, as a teacher and stuff and yeah, just, just a great guy. Um, and, uh, he wasn't afraid to tell you, you did something wrong because he knows, you know, eventually you're going to do it right. Mm -hmm. Um, I do remember one uh, it was a game. I think we played four city and we weren't playing very well. And, uh, went into halftime, we were up like by a touchdown and we, we come out from halftime and we we're getting kind of warmed up and we were going to take the kickoff and he walked over to me and he screamed right in my face and asked me, are you going to do, beep 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 something tonight <laughs> and he swapped me upside the head and the helmet and I, it really woke me up but uh you know things like that you know a lot of kids would wouldn't like that but i mean it was things like that that he knew when he needed to get after you and uh it worked yep. and same with coach perkins i mean he just had a voice about him when you did something wrong. <laughs> you knew it. Yeah. And he had a couple of nice choice words as well. <laughs> Encouraging words. But yeah, two awesome guys. Really good guys. Uh, my dad always says, no offense to anyone else on that team, but he goes, I would have my wife, my mom, Shelda, man in the oven at Mark's Pizza so he could go watch Mike Stripling pull on track. <laughs> <laughs> he was, you said you had good guys blocking in front of you. Uh, what was your yep. go-to play? Was it 42, 43 trap? Was it 45 dive? What was kind of the main um, play you liked to run? Yeah, we we run a lot of 245 dive. Um, and we were on the rod 242 trap too. Them were our main go-tos. 
Um, I do remember one game in the playoffs my junior year. We played Newman and we ran 245 dive. I I don't know actually how many times in a row, but 15 to 17 times in a row. Mm -hmm. And because uh, they had beat us earlier that year. And uh, we had the lead and we just kept doing it. And Coach Sanger wasn't going to stop till they stopped it. And eventually we just scored a touchdown, I think. And yeah, that was our good play. It still kind of is, <laughs> you know, to oh, this yeah. day. Doesn't change. Uh, and I, yeah. I went to that game with my dad and my sister, and we hit a deer on the way home after the game. So we were. Uh, pumped about winning that game, getting payback against Newman, and then we smoked, we got the car all damaged up. I still remember that. And I was 20, 11 years old. So, uh, and then for you, Jake, what was it like? Um, we're going to get to Kane and Kale here in a little bit. Uh, what was it like being able to watch your boys play for Coach Mark Sanger and Kevin Eisman and Ryan Johnson, all these guys that have been on staff and were are West Hancock alums? Uh, what's it mean to you to? to have that next generation come after you yeah um pretty awesome i i tell you what i was twice as nervous for all of their games than i think i ever was for mine and i don't know why i'd always tell myself i don't know why i i mean my stomach's just in knots and i don't know why but it, that's just the way it is oh. but uh yeah and uh, like coach eisman Coach Johnson, Mark Sanger, you know, I know them guys uh, very well. Um, and yet, even like Coach Eisman, when the boys were little and we had the uh, the elementary football program, I coached with him on that too as well. Um, yeah, it was fun. Like say, good guys to be around. Um, they all still live here in town. And yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to be able to, you know, guys, you know, guys, you trust coaching your kids and know they're going to, they're going to learn, learn from some of the best. So pretty Kane, reassuring. Kane and Kale. Now it's your turn to chime in. Did dad tell elaborative stories about his playing days? Did he, Keep it pretty low key. To, you know what? What did you hear about your dad's run back in the nineties? He never told too many stories about his football days, but we've seen a couple newspaper articles of him running the ball, and it was it's just funny to see that. We also he pulled out his wrestling tape one time. I think our grandma Kath recorded of him one. I can't remember if he was winning or losing in it, but it was pretty, it was just funny to see him in sports. Cause like we were in sports at the, like at the same, it was just, it was cool to see. Yeah. So no, no, uh, I made the game winning touchdown with two broken leg stories or anything like that. No. <laughs> uh, uh, I sure recorded a few up. stories for him, but yeah, nothing. Yeah, I just, I, I just <laughs> love nothing like, too uh, out of line. Yep, I just, I, just, it's just so cool because you know a lot of towns, a lot of you know people go there, play sports there, come back, their kids. We have a lot of that here in Britain. We have a lot of uh, multi generations that stay in the community, and, and you see those same last names. You know, every handful of years, it just kind of keeps going and. Um, you guys, I, I, I don't, I can't off the top of my head think of another family that has as many championships as you guys do. So that's one reason why I wanted to do this podcast. But, um, and I've also been told people about Jake's age and even the generation, you know, like in the seventies and stuff, they're not real happy with me because that record book and the book I put out, uh, has kind of squashed some of those old tales of how good we used to be when we were younger and now there's proof of man you actually weren't that you know so sorry about that but uh i've, I've heard at hobo days a few times so he might he might only ran it only nine times instead of 15 you know yeah 
<laughs> I tell people for the right price, I can change those numbers if we need to. <laughs> whatever next, whatever we need to do. Yeah. So, next edition, you could do a nice, that. A nice donation to the Sanger Legacy mm. Fund might get you up a couple spots on the list. So yeah, there you go. Kane, let's get to Kane here. And again, you guys chime in whenever you want. Uh, Kane's a 2022 graduate, so that means he played football uh, 2018 to 2021. Uh, fairly similar to your dad. Uh, freshman year started off in the semifinals, lost that game to Hudson. We're down like 21 nothing right away, almost came back and won. Sophomore year, he won a state title just like your dad. Uh, the only difference at this point now, uh, pretty close. Jake went to the semis as a junior. You guys lost in the quarterfinals to Grundy. And then, obviously, a big difference, missing the playoffs. Jake's senior year, Kane won another state title as a senior. Uh, records were about the same, 44-5. and five. Uh, You played a big role on that 2019 team as a sophomore, mostly on defense. Uh, you had two tackles in that title game, solid in pass coverage. Uh, on the season, he had two interceptions, a fumble recovery, 40 tackles, which was good for fifth on the team. Uh, talk about playing with Tate Hagen, Joe Smith, Chandler Redenius, winning that state title as a sophomore. Uh, yeah, it was that was a really fun year of football. I didn't I didn't really have to think too much. Like when I was playing, I mean, I only got to play defense. So I always got a break when the offense would come on, which usually it was a short break because we would score so fast because not many people could stop them. But it was it was really fun to be on the defense because, I mean, I was really small compared to everybody on the defense. I mean, you look to my left and it was Joe Smith. I mean, he's huge. Mm -hmm. So I got – I did run the ball or pass the ball my way quite a bit. So I got involved in a lot of stuff, which was fun because I ain't afraid to go and stick my nose in to make a tackle or anything. But I also got to return punts, which was really cool. And I can think of one time I dropped one. That was, wasn't, <laughs> I'll save that story for later, but <laughs> it was, it was super fun, and I think that was I mean, that was just a special team to play on with it being Coach Sanger's last year. And I think everyone knew what the end goal was and made it happen. There was, wasn't really any thing left behind. It was a pretty awesome – it's a pretty awesome thing. And I made a lot of friends and I still hang out with those friends today from that team, which is pretty cool also. Yeah. Joe Smith is down at Iowa, just getting ready to graduate. Do you ever run into Joe? <laughs> I do every once in a while. Talk to him for a couple minutes, but yeah, it's pretty fun to see him down here. Yeah. Uh, 2020 would have been Kale's freshman year and then your junior year. Uh, I've said many times on the podcast, this was the COVID crazy year. We were still a state finalist team in 2020, I, I believe. Uh, us and Grundy met in the quarterfinals. Iowa City Regina drops down uh, to Class A that year because they did like a one-year reclassification thing because of COVID. They weren't a Class A team. They were a 1A team. They try to keep the top four teams apart. We lost to Garner. If Regina's not an A, they keep us and Grundy apart. We make it to the Dome, probably the finals, play Grundy again. Who knows? Uh, that's just always been my take about that 2020 season. Uh, lost, what, 20 to 14 in the quarters at home to Grundy. We had some guys out. We had a coach out with the COVID stuff. Uh, Got to play with your brother. But then a uh, big thing here, 2021, you guys bounce back and – Again, my opinion, I think a lot of people's opinion might be one of the best, if not the best defense in school history, statistically wise. Um, you guys only allowed 60 points in 13 games in route to that 2021 title. Uh, 28 of those points were in the playoffs with, what, 14 of those coming in the state championship game to a good Grundy team. And the rest of those points were essentially after the game had already been decided. Uh 
what it mean for you to get that second title, to do it as a senior, to be a part of that defense? Yeah, I think that season was definitely something. I don't think a lot of people gave us really the benefit of the doubt. I mean, we were, when you look at the people on the team, I mean, we had a lot of kids who were pretty small in size. We weren't like that 2019 team at all. But I think on the 21 team, we everyone was, you could call them grinders. Like, I, we were... When, like, the teams would come out, I mean, like I said, we were really small, but it by the end of the game, it was, I mean, we scored way more points than they did. I it I, I don't know how to describe it. Just teams would come out, talk trash immediately, which that just goes along with football. It's the fun of it. And by the end of it, there was – nothing it was silent yeah let's get this over with yeah yeah, yeah. and I, our defense was man it, that was it was fun playing defense on that team too I mean I got involved in I got to move to linebacker my senior year and I got I was outside so whenever they'd run the ball I mean they'd always go to block the middle backer so I got to take a free shot at a lot of the running backs. And that was really fun. But uh, going in just into any game, I just the mentality of that 21 team is we didn't really care what happened or what was going on as, as long as we were winning and kept scoring. And it, yeah, it turned out obviously really well. We won a state championship. But yeah, that was the best teamwork that I've ever been a part of. We really, everyone played together, just blocked for one another, and it was definitely something special to be a part of. I was really happy to be on that team. Yeah, and Jay yes. Hiscock said on, on the broadcast a lot, Kane Zool might be the best open field tackler we've ever had. It is, it is, you can tell you're a wrestler. There, no one got by you. Um, if someone was coming towards you, that's pretty much where the play ended. Uh, you had 77 tackles that season and nine for a loss. Uh, that's a lot of TFLs, especially for a guy that transitioned from D-back to, to linebacker. Uh, again, no one was getting past you. I don't think I ever remember seeing you miss a tackle, nor did a lot of guys miss tackles in that uh, that team. Um Got your rings ready to go, Kane? Yep, I do. <laughs> I got both of them right here. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> never get tired of seeing those. No, they're pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I talked to you at the Lopsy game this last fall, quarterfinals. I go up to that little set of side bleachers to try to get a good view to do stats and stuff, and uh, I asked you. Could you go out there right now and do it and play? And do you have that drive and desire to do it? And you you pretty much were like, I'd go out there in a heartbeat. I think about it every day. Uh, yeah, how, how how are you missing playing football still? Yeah, it's, it's tough to watch because, of course, I want to be out there. Like when I watch Kale play football and wrestle, all I want to do is go back out there and play. But I I wish I had a year or two more of just maturing in general because I well, as I went to college, I gained weight, but it wasn't bad weight. It was just kind of finally growing into my body and I lifted quite a bit more and I wish I would have been able to play kind of at the state I am in now, but that's just you know, a wish now. It was I'm happy with everything I got. So then Here. Kane, when I asked him that, and he you could tell he was just ready to jump out there and steal someone's pads. He goes, How about you, Dan? And I'm like, 
I haven't played since 2004. Every time I watch, I, and then I think Mitchell Smith just trucks somebody, and I'm said that hurts me just watching. <laughs> me standing on the back of these bleachers, the back of my knees hurt so bad right now. I'm like, I that ship sailed a decade plus ago. I'm like, there is no desire at this point. It's not one bit worth it. It just cracked me up how you know a couple years out. I'm like, I remember that. Just wanting to get out there. So, uh, Kale. Let's get to you. you. Like you said, your freshman year was 2020. And by the way, Jake and Doug, uh, real quick here before we get to you, Kale, talk about talk about Kane's career and the, the legacy he left behind that left the program in. Uh, great career. Uh, like you said, um, tackling is a huge thing. Uh, the add to that, Jack Fisher, he stopped me in the grocery store one day during the week and he goes, Hey, I want to tell you something. I go, Oh, what's that? And he goes, that Kane, he goes, he's the best open field tackler in high school I've ever seen. Yep. I go, Oh, yeah. thanks. That, you know, that really means a lot to me. And he goes, no, he goes, I'm serious. He goes, I've been around football, high school sports for over 60 years. And he goes, he's the best tackler I've ever seen. And I go, that's pretty awesome to come from a guy like Jack Fisher, which he was our principal. And like I said, great guy, um, a lot of wisdom. And uh, he really liked uh, West Hancock Athletics, Brit Athletics, and a lot of good stories from him too as well. Yep, yep. I did a podcast with but, him. But, yeah, as far yeah. as Kane's uh, – is... yep, yep. Um, as far as, like, Kane's career, though, I mean, yeah, two state titles, it just – I mean, obviously everybody wants that. <laughs> Everyone that's ever played here would give anything for that. So, I mean, that's it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if he could tackle me, though, but <laughs> when I was in high school. But I, we're just going to leave that to. one up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hobo, uh, Hobo Days is coming up, so we'll uh, – <laughs> make that happen well we, we'll have to do yeah or a version of jake but it'll be close enough so i'll i'll stand by and take a picture so i can remember <laughs> see who goes gets I'll up the it. word yeah we'll no, offense, no offense <laughs> Doug, but i think anyone who watches that will always remember the result regardless <laughs> oh i know the result yeah. <laughs> the pictures would be good the video would be good so and ibuprofen for one of the two of you yeah sponsored yeah. by tylenol yeah <laughs> all right kale your turn you've been sitting patiently for a while for sure. i know you're a man of many words is what i've been told so uh 2020 your freshman year you got to play with your uh be on the same team with your brother that quarterfinal season uh then a sophomore in 2021 like you just talked about kane led the team uh along with matthew francis bunch of guys uh that that uh fourth state title in school history uh, you got in a lot, cleanup duty uh, when the game was out of hand. Uh, but more importantly, I think you guys got to practice against those guys every day. That That's invaluable. Uh, literally, you got to practice against a state championship team. Uh, what were you thinking going into junior and senior year? Did you think two more trips to the title game and another title were possible? A lot of talent coming back. What, were, what was kind of your mindset going into the, your last two years of high school? Um. I definitely thought it was possible because, again, we had the, like a lot of the returning people going into junior year. And, I mean, during that time, that whole year, we were undefeated going into the championship game. So with all that happening, also going into like senior year, I knew we could do it because my grade returning again with the experience we've had with those other, you know, championship quality teams. Um, with all those guys leaving, I knew it was just our time to shine and we wanted to prove ourselves. Go back to that 2022 title game a little bit. I know it kind of hurts 27, nothing lost to Grundy, but how'd that, how'd that fuel you guys along with the, uh, St. Ansgar loss your senior year, uh, talk about those two tough, you know, those two losses in about a four game span going back to 2022 into 2023. How'd that fuel you guys to, to make that title run? Um, 
for that Grundy game, uh, I mean, the whole 2022 season, we were pretty dominant and ready for anything. But obviously, come to that game, and we were kind of shut out. It was a big eye opener, I would say, for the team. And obviously, we had a lot more work to do if we wanted to be that championship team. And I think, you know, my team, my grade felt the same way. And so when it come time that for that next year, after losing to Grundy, it was do or die. Uh, I think the game where I, I realized, you know, St. Ansgar, you know, the sky was falling in Brit. I think people were, you know, what the heck's going on? But when you really look back to that St. Ansgar loss, it was pretty much a, a brand new offensive line for the most part. I mean, the, a lot of those guys had not played quality snaps per se at the varsity level up until about then, you know, 2022, a lot of them were backups. First few games of 2023, we didn't play great opponents, get to St. Anzier and that kind of kicked us in the teeth. Uh, but in the, in the backfield, the skill guys, you, Kellen Smith, Mitchell Smith, Jackson Peterson, mixing in Brady Bixel, Creighton Kelly when he needed to, a lot of horses in the backfield. I think the game where um, things kind of came together was that South Central Calhoun game. Uh, I made the trip way over there. It wasn't terribly far from down here, but it was still a jaunt. It's like, they're a pretty talented team. That's going to be a good matchup, and that's going to be, a you know, maybe determine how we're going to be this season. And about six minutes into the game, I'm like, yep, we're going to be pretty good from here on out. And the uh, the stat guys for South Central Calhoun were up in the box with Jay and Kevin and me, and they were like, our kids look like they don't want to be out there anymore. And it was still in the middle of the first quarter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just that to me was the turning point. But talking about Jake's gray hairs, let's fast forward here to the state championship game. Uh, Jake's gray hairs. <laughs> 30 to 28, literally come from behind. We did not lead that entire game until there was, what, like 37 seconds left or something like that. And then even with 37 seconds left, I was like, that is way too much time for Woodbury Central. They can chuck it around. and Yeah. We weren't stopping them. Uh, can you believe that? Can you still believe that actually happened, the way that game ended? Uh, I mean, now looking back at it, it almost seems like it was impossible to do. But, I mean, hey, it happens. And, obviously, during the time, I was – I did just didn't know what to think because, I mean, the year before, we got shut out and then – I was almost, I mean, scared that, oh, my gosh, this year we were so close, but we just came up short this time. But I don't know. Uh, Doug and Jake watching and Kane, too, because, you know, you're on the outside looking in. Uh, what were the thoughts, emotions, feelings going into the, the last seconds of that game? Um, I know for me, uh, it's probably one of the most nervous I've ever been. Um. I think, you know, the winning and losing part of it, I hate to say this, but that was the biggest problem I think I was going to have with it. Because, um, like I say, there's not a lot of losing football games in this town. And it, <laughs> I know I'm speaking for a lot of people here. It just it drives me nuts. And I don't like seeing my kids hurt like that, uh, you know, when they pour their heart into something and, and don't get the result they wanted, but uh, rest assured when the buzzer sounded, we could all take a big uh, deep breath and let it out. And I just remember some of the alum too, um, you know, uh, Chad Johnson, he flew up from Texas to watch the game. Uh, Chad, uh, my dad's got a really good friend. who. Yeah. Yep. Chad come up. He sat next to me. Uh, my dad also has a really good friend from Texas. He drove up and watched the game, and when it was over, he drove, he drove home. But he come up to see the game, you know. And you, you see guys like that; they make the the trek up here to watch and play football, and then you know the whole game does not go the way we want it to, and then the triumph at the end is. It, I mean, you can't write it any better. I don't think. I, I disagree. It could be like forty six nothing. That would be better to me. There's then well, you know, right. years off your life. Those are the games. <laughs> yep. I love 
those are the games I like because it's yeah. a lot easier for me and uh, rest assured. You're, otherwise, I was nervous the whole game. Yeah. Just a wreck. Yeah. And Travis Tag and he sat behind me and you know he he don't he's not coaching or don't have a kid in there but he was pacing and rocking and stomping and screaming yep. and yeah I mean yeah. I I know for everybody our whole town they they can they feel the same way yeah and you know I don't live in town obviously um, but I looked around and go I know that person's from Des Moines I know that person's from Minneapolis it was just people came back took days off of work to, to come for a high school football game uh that that doesn't happen any everywhere um and no. you know if it was one of those schools where the, we made it to the dome in the first time in 40 years heck yeah i'm gonna take a day off and go because this never happens we go every year and people <laughs> yeah. come for the semis and the finals every single year it's not it's like the next one is the biggest one, you know, is the, is the big deal. It's not just, ah, oh, we've already been there so many times. I'm not going to go. It's the next time is always the most important one. That's what I think is pretty cool. So, um, yeah. So Kale, uh, so your dad got one title and one championship appearance. Kane made it to two title games with two titles. Kale, you upped them even, uh, three title game appearances with the two titles. Uh, where, where's your rings? Got them. Right here. Oh, yeah, you bet. There's one from 2022. 20, 21. Pretty yeah. good, but. 21. Or, yeah, 21, 21, sorry. And then mine for senior year, obviously a whole lot prettier. <laughs> <laughs> There's the smack talk I've been wanting all night. There we go. I just borrow one of Kale's if I want to wear one around the house. <laughs> Right, you come to bed and Rachel goes, "Why are you wearing that? What are you doing?" <laughs> like I said, Jake, what's stopping you? Go to a jewelry store and say, "I'd like one of these that say 1996." I'd like this on it. It's just like birthday cake from Costco. No one's checking to see if it's actually your birthday. You might as well just get yourself one. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my my question is. So I know Rachel pretty well because, like I said, her grandma Hattie was kind of my like surrogate grandma growing up. What's the percentage of athletic ability Kane and Kale got from mom and then from dad? What is it like 90 10, Rachel? 80 20? What are we thinking? <laughs> well, if you ask if you ask any of my friends, they will probably go with the 90 10 on Rachel's side. But uh, yeah, I tell you what she was she was pretty tough in her own right um i remember growing up uh we played football in muth slot next to their house yeah. and uh rachel was the only girl that played and she had her own pads and helmet <laughs> and i'll never forget this um but she wore a washington redskins helmet i don't know why that sticks in my head but <laughs> Yeah, she, uh, she played football with us in elementary school, and she was tough. I tell you what, when you know you pick two captains, uh, Rachel was usually the first or the second person picked out of if there was twenty people standing there. So, kind of tells you how tough she was growing up. Yeah, she was quick too. I remember basketball, so she was shifty and got around there pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you say muse a lot. We used to. She play wasn't football. afraid to. Right there, too. So, right. Uh, she wasn't afraid to get after these boys either. Uh, she oh, kind of behind when they needed them. Yeah. And that hasn't changed ever. I mean, she's still like that, isn't she? Well, uh, you know, I think they got sick of getting their butts whipped. So they just, they eventually, uh, they got better, got to be better <laughs> kids and started listening a lot better. Yep, there you go. She's the reason for title number two in '96. We'll go with that. I, I think that's a good way, good way to put it. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna get to some statistics here because uh, then we're gonna compare, and I'm gonna ask Doug who he thinks was the best of the three, and then you know you're gonna have an awkward whatever the next holiday is you get together. Uh, 
<laughs> running the ball, so a rushing stat category here. Kane is 41st on the career rushing list with 1,070 yards. Jake ran for exactly 2,000 yards, good for 18th all-time. Kale, um, after his senior year, is 11th all-time with 2,425 yards. So the three of you combined for 5,495 yards. I put the math, did the math, and then I looked at the all-time list again. Uh, the three of you combined would be second all-time behind Chris Schluck by about 100 yards. Um, just thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, the one thing I always say about Wes Hancock's statistics for football, rushing, you know, you talk about Kale's senior year, Kellen Smith, Mitchell Smith, Jackson Peterson, Brady Bixell, Creighton Kelly, a couple of those guys. No one, you know, for the most part, for 13 games is running the ball 30, 35 times because it's such a balanced offense. You get up by 40 points, take the starters out. You know, any of the three of you, those stats, you know, could be a lot more. You just you have so many people have to think of that way. Uh, Kale, your fifth all-time in career rushing touchdowns with 40. Jake is 14th with 28, and Kane had uh, 10 career touchdowns. So that's a total of 78 rushing touchdowns. Uh, defensively, Kane is tied for eighth all-time in career interceptions on defense. And then, like I, we've talked about this whole time, the whole theme of this podcast tonight, combined five state titles. Jake, 96. Kane in 19 and 21. Kale in 21 and 23. Kale also played in the 22 state title game. So six state title game appearances. I never got past the quarterfinals. So uh, like I said, there's some guys in this program still had success, but nowhere near the success uh, you guys have had. And uh, I got to ask you, Kale, since you're still kind of right in there, 2024, there's a lot of guys coming back. The O-line's going to be pretty good. You got Bixel and Kelly, some of those young sophomores. Do you see a state title appearance? Uh, game appearance uh, coming up for Wes Hancock in 2024? Uh, I mean, they very well could. I mean, plenty of returning, great experience especially for that line. I mean, obviously they're definitely on the get better, so no. only time to tell. Yeah, and I think the cool part about our program here, and we I've said this many times on here, you know, Hey, Kane, hey, Jake, you made one title game. Kane, I have – you say, I have two. Kale can be like, I've been in three. We're all rooting for those kids to get to the fourth. You know, they're, they're, there's not that like, oh, I want to be the guy that's at the top. Oh, you know, it's like we always want this program to just keep getting better and better. And, you know, you're, we're rooting for those guys to get back because it's the program. It's, you know, we're all just, at the end of the day, parts of this big thing that's Wes Hancock football. So, uh just something I always yep. like to point out. People are always pretty proud of just the next team, the next year, the next accomplishment, the next trophy. So, uh, Doug, I'm going to throw it out there. Start bragging on them. You got to answer. You can jokingly answer. Who is the best of the three, you think? Well. I'm just Kale, messing with you. You don't have to answer that. Kale's probably the best runner because I can't remember Jake running. <laughs> and Kane's, Kane's good tackler. You know, uh, I remember Jake getting scoring touchdowns, and he was a good runner too. So I don't know if I guess I want Christmas presents. I better say they all are. <laughs> Three way time. I'm not surprised one bit. But no, Kale. He Kale was Kale was Kale was like Chris Slugger. You know, he just. He didn't go around. He just would just soon run him over. Mm -hmm. You know, he just, that's why they call him bull kale dozer. <laughs> and I, uh, I always go back to this story, Doug, Don DeWard, the old D coordinator at central from Kanawha. He comes to all the dome games. And after that semifinal game against Madrid, what was the 242 trap kale ran for like 28 yards and a first down on third and something. I don't remember the exact situation. But after the game, Don goes, that's why I come to these games. You don't see that very often anymore of a third and long situation. Ritz just going to run an inside trap yep. and go for almost 30, you know. Uh, yep. that's I love that style of play. So, uh, Doug, what else can you say about 
mean, these three I, and, uh, watch I, them. I really, I really liked Kale running at the Wapsie Valley game this yeah. year. I mean, he, he, he really, he's just wide open every play. Just really did, really showed up. Wapsie Valley game. <laughs> Jake, what about you? And talk about Kale. Talk about Kane a little bit. Sport that you guys have as a family. <laughs> Um, yeah, like I said, um, Kale had a great offensive career at the fullback position there. It's like I said, it's one of the funnest things to play, but like Mark Sanger, he tells people too, it's great to get all the touchdowns in the yards, but man, when this kid came home, he had swelling and bumps and bruises on both arms, legs, and uh, Rachel is usually ready with the ice packs and Tylenol and ibuprofen and uh, got, get them fixed up. And, uh, yeah. And Kane, uh, I tell you what, as a defensive coach, I think like Mark Sanger, I mean, talk about uh, having someone in the back or uh, running your defense you know, that you can definitely count on him. Um, say no one's going to get past him. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, they're both – to me, uh, they're both way better athletes than I was. But I guess that's kind of what you shoot for as a dad is to hope they're better than you and uh, you know you did a good job. Yep. I tell you what, man, we threw a lot of passes <laughs> with a football inside this house. We broke a lot of lamps, uh, <laughs> sheetrock, um, and a couple recliners. And uh, I tell you what, Rachel had a few choice words for all of us. <laughs> um, but, you know, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Uh, it, it was fun. A lot of fun. You were passing the ball? Shouldn't you have been, like, handing the ball off? That seemed to be a little more appropriate. Uh, well, yeah, you know, um, it just – it was more of a challenge in the house. So, yeah, we uh, – I actually sat in recliner with my feet up and uh, kind of just run routes usually in the living room and I'd pass it to him. And then Kale, he'd watch for a while and then decide, oh, I think I want to try that. And Yeah, it uh, – a lot of footballs tossed around here, that's for sure. Do you remember Even that? our dog has his own football in the house. <laughs> you remember, Jake, you remember the, that football when you were throwing it out here at the farm when you were little and you hit the silo and poked a <laughs> hole in it? And I said, that oh, was, yeah. That was my <laughs> so, favorite football. Johnny Unitas signed that football for me. You poked the damn hole in it. <laughs> And it wasn't, yeah. but it, it made him feel bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that old leather football, and the laces were like actual shoestrings. Yeah. They were like rope uh, strings, and there was no grip left on the ball. It was just smooth, and, man, yeah. I played with that thing every day, and I kicked it, and it come down on the silo, and there's bolts that stick out, and it come down on one of them bolts and just – it popped it and it was a sad day for me. Uh, and I told, I told Doug about it and, you know, jokingly, he's like, Oh man, that was my favorite football. I think I got that from Johnny Unitas and, you know, he really poured it on, but <laughs> yeah. Probably got it. Probably got it from Ben Franklin or something, you know, <laughs> The store, not the person, right? You're not that old. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm only sixty-three. <laughs> <laughs> well, fellas, I think this is a good stopping place. Uh like always, gotta thank my sponsors. Again, I could barely fit myself on the screen. Uh great money going into the Sanger Legacy Fund. Those guys showed you their rings. Uh we try to help, you know, kids and staff pay for those and Blacks and footballs and all that stuff when we do well as a team and everything else. So sangerstrong.com if you want to, to give and continue contributing to that. Uh, next week, I believe next Tuesday, I'm going to do a podcast with Jordan Wyland. 
And then I have one with Jeff Stevenson. He's a 2024 Hall of Fame inductee. And then the 1973 Kanawha football team will be after that. Shea Smith. And then Paul and Matthew Francis, one of Kane's classmates. And then Paul's a, a assistant football coach and the junior high wrestling coach and a teacher at West Hancock. So I'm pretty excited next few months to, to talk to those people and, and get some good episodes in. So, uh, fellas, I always leave this open for you guys. Uh, any stories you need to tell? Any teammates you want to shout out? Anything like that? And then we'll, uh, we'll hit end on record and we'll chat for a little bit and call it a night. You, you do a real good job, Dan. I mean, it's it's really a good thing you're doing here. Really good. Thank you. Well, again, I couldn't do it if there wasn't good athletes and teachers and coaches and everything, yeah. to, everyone like that to talk to. So, yeah. Yep. I appreciate you guys coming on here. Uh, anything else, fellas? I always leave, just give you a minute here to poke fun at each other one last time, whatever you need to do. So, well, go ahead, Kane. I'd just say I'm proud to grow up at Brit, Iowa. Couldn't be, couldn't be any better than that. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree as well. Talked to a lot of people, you know, like that don't live here. They have kids, and they, you know, they always say they wish they could have brought their kids back here and and raised them here, which, and I get it, you know, you got to go where your schooling takes you and your job, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty nice to, pretty nice to be able to stay here where I grew up and, uh, raise kids here too. Yep. Def definitely. I agree. I, I bring it up to my wife about twice a year, like, Hey, there's a fourth grade opening at Wes Hancock and I mean, <laughs> logistics where her family lives and everything else and we we're, we're pretty happy in our jobs and i wish i keep thinking every year my boys get a little bit older like ah one year closer to playing for mark that'd be a lot of fun knock on wood you never know that's that's what i keep saying so we'll see what happens but all right fellas well i appreciate three generations of zools got to see some championship rings tonight and we'll, we'll work on getting jake his so all right <laughs> thanks everybody and go eagles